Dr. Dave 101. Respect. This is what it comes down to when it comes to searching for Sasquatch. Chris Reinhardt, when we first interviewed him a number of months ago, was one of these Sasquatch researchers, investigators, who believed he was searching for a flesh and blood type creature. But after an experience in Florida where he had weird, strange radio frequencies coming up, where he had paranormal activity coming up, electronic voice phenomena combined with tree knocking, rock throwing, and other aspects of everything weird and strange really made him shift his focus regarding how to investigate the legendary Sasquatch. Now, this is one thing we do know about this creature, and that is we know very little. We don't know where it comes from. We do not know where it's from, where it's been, where it's going, why it's here, and why can we not get a good video of it? Why are there no bodies? Why is there not enough evidence out there to really show what this creature is all about? Look, for those playing scientists out in the forest who claim that this is a flesh and blood creature, whether you call it a relative of Gigantopithecus, some sort of bipedal hominid, or even as crazy as it sounds, a monkey. What you're doing is you are not conducting anything scientific. Let's get that right off the bat. There is no science when you are conducting opinion, which is why researchers like Chris Reinhardt have pulled away from the BFRO, otherwise known as the Bigfoot Research Organization, because they're sciency. Look, there's nothing wrong with using scientific practice in trying to figure out what this creature is, what its habitat is, how does it eat, what does it feed off of, where does it live. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing. But if you are ruling out centuries of stories from people who've had weird encounters today, which includes UFOs, ghosts, or other little creatures that we cannot explain from little people to gnomes, then what you are doing is you are skewing the evidence on purpose. And right now, we have too many investigators who are out there saying, oh, I don't believe in that woo crap that Sasquatch can visibly disappear. I don't believe in that woo that it's connected to UFOs or the paranormal. I don't believe in that. Guess what? You've already failed science. You really have. Because science is about theory. And if you're refusing to investigate all possible theories of what this creature may or may not be, then you have immediately failed your study. Your research can't be trusted because you're not conducting proper research. You're conducting opinion. I don't understand why so many Sasquatch researchers out there want to rule out potential evidence before they've even investigated it. The last time I checked with the scientists that I know or the books that I've read, opinion has nothing to do with the study. Look at the egg on his face that Neil deGrasse Tyson has had when it comes to debating the UFO community about these Tic Tacs or the potential that extraterrestrial life exists and has traveled to this planet. He mocks the community. He mocks the UFOs. He mocks the military fighter pilots who have had these close encounters, whether it's Alex Dietrich or David Fravor or others. How scientific is that? What it does is it makes you look less credible. 
in the word of public opinion, it makes you look like a fool. Now, I'm not sitting there saying that there should be cover-ups or there should be stories about the government hiding this creature and the Smithsonian has bodies, but we're not allowed to find out about it. That I don't know. That, I think, is a slim possibility. That is my opinion. But until we can start ruling things out properly, effectively, and with evidence, everything is on the table. You just can't use the eraser on the back end of a pencil because you don't like the answer. And too many times we have too many people in this field playing the role of eraser. I don't know why. I don't know how. You don't need to believe in the woo. You really don't. But you cannot rule it out. Too many times researchers have been seeing tracks of Sasquatch prints, dozens of them, walking through the snow, and then all of a sudden it disappears. It ends. The trail ends. There's no exit point. It is just gone. Now, maybe Sasquatch jumped into a tree and started swinging through the trees. That is a theory. Could be plausible. But what if there are no trees around? Like a lot of the stories and encounters with the Yeti in the Middle East. You cannot rule out evidence unless you know for a fact. That is the problem we have. That is the problem why none of these problems or these creatures ever get found. There are brilliant people in this field on both sides of the ledger. Why they cannot come together to hang out, share evidence, and rule what's true and what's not, I don't know. Probably ego, just like every other field that we have in the paranormal community. Ego kills a lot of good research because we don't want to admit we're wrong and we only want to be right and to get as many followers as possible about what is going on. That is the danger of what we are seeing. That is the reason why many people, like in our chat rooms or even listening out there, have questions. Why haven't we found a body? Why haven't we found more than maybe a few hairs or footprints or a couple of piles of poo, a.k.a. scat? We really don't know. Are we looking in the right places? We don't know if this creature is migratory. We don't know if it's from space. One seems more logical than the other, but we can't rule either out. How can we? A lot of people have had encounters with UFOs and Sasquatch at the same time. What about people who've been abducted and claim to have seen Sasquatch on craft being tested much like a lab rat? Or in an alien case, a human lab rat. This is the difficulty of what we do. There are not very many answers and that there are a lot more questions. Could it be interdimensional? Could it use portals? Why is every photograph blurry? We're not all bad photographers. We're not all using the old Canon AE-1 from 1984, or Polaroids. We're using high-tech equipment, whether it's your cell phone, which, yeah, the cameras aren't the best, but still higher quality, or whether it is with high-end video cameras. Why do people see bright flashes in front of trail cams? Why are trail cams in supposed hot spot areas, all of a sudden blanking out, their batteries are dying. And those are batteries that you could leave in for days 
without any issue. These are questions that need to be answered. These are questions that you cannot rule out anything. And we can't. This is why the BFRO continues to take a little bit of heat. But they don't care. They want their own storyline. And that's what they're doing. That's why many members are leaving. Because, you know, imagine you're a person who calls up the BFRO. You have a report of a Sasquatch encounter by your campsite in the middle of nowhere. And then a black triangle flies over and this creature gets hit by the UFO light. And you watch it disappear. There's a good chance that report will never see the light of day after filing it to the BFRO. Or it will be so heavily edited and redacted that the main purpose of the story is no longer there. When Chris Reinhardt was a part of BFRO, he had that happen. It disgusted him. But more so, it disgusted the person who gave the report because now the report was inaccurate. Why? Because the BFRO is all about science. Does that make any sense? No, it does not. Why should it make sense? It should make sense because they should be running the report the way it's written out. But they're too proud, too egotistical to believe anything different because they've convinced many of their researchers that this is all about science. Correction, BFRO, or any independent investigators out there. Much like the paranormal world, you're not conducting anything scientific. You may use scientific gear. You may know how to pour a casting to get a footprint or a handprint. But you haven't conducted anything scientific. You have no purpose. You have no procedure. You have no theory. You have no hypothesis. And you have no conclusion. Why? Because you're already eliminating the possibility and the plausibility of things happening because of your own personal bias. This hurts a community. This hurts the person who filed the report. And this hurts the entire reputation of the study of Sasquatch. And it's not just happening in Sasquatch land. We see it with ghosts. We see it with dogmen. We see it with UFOs. We see it with aliens. We see it with consciousness. We see it everywhere. If you want to take the research seriously here, the first thing you have to do is open your mind. Once you start to open your mind, well then, only then, will we be potentially on the right track to finding answers as to what is the legendary Sasquatch. That is your Dave 101. Do me a favor. If you're on YouTube watching this, leave a comment right under. Tell me what you think. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know.